What did you make of today? Um, we're hearing as many as 80% of people might have turned out to vote. Yes, that is true. Uh, Philippine elections are really important events uh, for uh, Filipinos and uh, we're expecting an average maybe around 70 to 80 percent of of the electorate that's around 67 million Filipinos to be able to cast their vote but uh, Beverly unfortunately we've received a lot of complaints of counting machines not working and I think until now even if polls have officially closed there's still Filipinos who are casting their vote because they lined up before the 7 o'clock p.m. Um, deadline. And uh, according to our electoral law, as long as these voters are within the vicinity of the polling precinct, they should be allowed to vote. So that could then continue well into the evening. Um, when do you think we're going to start seeing results? And, and is it still your sense that uh, Bongbong Marcos is going to be the victor? Yes, uh, as soon as... Uh, 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 a precinct closes, meaning there are no more voters who are, um, who are going to cast their votes, um, the results of, of the voting counting machines, the VCMs, will automatically be sent uh, to uh, different servers. And one of them is uh, we call the, the transparency server, which will then be made publicly available. While not really official yet, meaning because the official has to be transmitted by the commission, uh, in 2016, in that presidential elections, we were able to find out who won the elections a little after midnight of, of Tuesday. Uh, however, uh, I think it's going to be a bit delayed. But in terms of whether the results will, will reflect the, the polls, we, wherein uh, Bongbong Marcos has a huge lead, I think the, the jury is still out. We still won't, don't know because it really depends on who turned out to vote. Uh, and given all those delays, uh, there might even be an impact of, of uh, some voters being disenfranchised informally because they've been standing in the heat for five to seven hours uh, just to to just to be able to cast their vote. Yeah, uh, at the last president presidential election, Lenny Robredo just beat Art Bong Bong Marcos. He said he will not let that happen again. What is your expectation of what he might do should he not be victorious? Well, when he uh, lost the vice presidential race against Robredo in 2016, he did make it difficult for, for Robredo by filing this electoral protest uh, that went up to the Supreme Court. It, it took uh, a major portion of the term of Vice President Robredo, and uh, she even has to shell out her own money in order to fund uh, the, uh, the, the recounting of some of the contested votes. But um, it was quite clear that the electoral protest had no bearing because it was a unanimous uh, decision of the Supreme Court that Bongbong Marcos lost that election. So who knows whether he'll do the same thing if he loses this election. Yeah. You know, I think from, looking from afar, it, it's so extraordinary that a, f that a family member of a dynasty that's plundered, what, $10 billion, we now believe, from the Philippines' coffers would be in a position to take the presidency. Uh, what, how do you explain uh, the swing to a family like this again. Right. Uh, there's a lot of factors, and we could we could discuss this, but we don't have time. For me, two factors are, are the most prominent. The first is that they, the Marcus dynasty has prepared for this. Uh, they know that uh, their time is limited, and but they bided their time. They did not run for the presidency in 2016 against Duterte. They did not run in 2010 against the, the son of Cory Aquino, they waited for that exact moment. So this is, a, I think, a, a last chance for the Marcoses to regain the presidency. I think the, the second factor is because Sara Duterte, the daughter of Rodrigo Duterte, did not run for the presidency and settled to be Bongbong Marcos's running mate. If she, if she ran for president, I don't think Marcos will have a chance. That is fascinating. Are there any checks and balances in place since his father was in office to prevent corruption, the corruption that we saw, the, the army power that we saw under Marcus's reign? There was a commission, and it's still existing right now, under the office of the president, called the Presidential Commission on Good Governance. 
uh, government that uh, uh, made sure that the excesses and the corruption during martial law uh, uh, will be addressed. And a lot of this has something to do with retrieving the ill-gotten wealth uh, that was uh, taken by the Marcoses. I think that will be one of the first major casualties if Marcus Jr. becomes president, because it's under him uh, as if he wins the elections. Interesting. Now, uh, we heard very little from him during the election campaign about what he stood for, what his policies were going to be, what his vision for the, the country was. Uh, what might we expect if he is the president? Indeed, <clears throat> Beverly, we did not really hear him because he refused to debate with other uh, presidential candidates. He only wanted to talk to his supporters, but by but what we've heard are simply motherhood statements. Um, jobs, lower food prices, infrastructure, and all of this uh, have glimmered uh, the Filipino public. However, in terms of really policies as well as political style and mode of governance, I think we only have to uh, not to look so far, but we have to look how his father has reigned over the country for two decades of brutal and oppressive rule. And we might expect that from the son as well.